Royalty 101: Queens Regnant Through History. Thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video. In 2013, Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands stepped down. In 2022, Queen Elizabeth II of the UK died. And in 2024, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark abdicated. All three passed their thrones to sons. Today, there are zero Queen's Regnant left in the world. This got me wondering, when was the last time in history this phenomenon occurred? Today, I will answer this question and many other fascinating queries I've received from you on the subject of Queen's Regnant through the ages. I'll fill you in on who was the first ever ruling queen, what was the most common female regnal name in history, who were the youngest and oldest queens, had the longest and shortest reigns, were the richest, had the most husbands, had the most children, and which queens died in childbirth, plus many more fascinating questions about the exclusive club of women who have been born to or clawed their way up to the top of the pile and become queens regnant. First, let's quickly review what a queen regnant is to differentiate them from the other four types of queens. A queen regnant is a queen in her own right. She is the monarch of her realm. A queen consort is the wife of a king. She is not the monarch, her husband is. A dowager queen is the widow of a dead king. A queen mother is a dowager queen who is also the mother of the living monarch. A queen regent, not to be confused with a regnant, is a queen consort who rules on behalf of the monarch, usually an incapacitated husband or an underage child. This video will also encompass the wider world of female monarchs, including empresses, sovereign princesses, and duchesses, and the various titles for ruling women in different languages, such as Sultana in Arabic, Tsarina in Russian, and Pharaoh in Egyptian, which leads nicely to the first question. Several of you asked, who was the first ever queen regnant? The first female ruler who can be historically confirmed is Sobekneferu of Egypt, who inherited the throne in 1806 BCE from Amenemnat IV, who may have been her brother, husband, or both. While there were likely female rulers before her, Sobekneferu is the first in the archaeological record to use the title of pharaoh, meaning king. There was no word for a female ruler. Little is known of her reign or why it ended in only four years. She ordered the construction of a grand pyramid, but upon her death or downfall, the project was abandoned. Mitch Dean, 5197, asks, What was the most common regnal name for a queen regnant? Regnal names or reigning names for women don't get repeated nearly as much as those for men. While there has been a Louis XIX of France and a Pope John XXIII, the highest regnal number reached by a queen was Tama Eva V, who was queen of Rimatara, an island in French Polynesia from 1892 to 1901. Her predecessor, Tama Eva IV, was also a woman, but Tama Evna's 1, 2, and 3 were all kings as it was a unisex name. The most common regnal name across all queens regnant is Mary, or its Latin equivalent, Maria, as Mary is the name of the most important woman in Christendom, who is also honored in Islam with the popular name Mariam. It may in fact be the most common name for women throughout history. There have been 12 queens regnant with variations on this moniker. A Maria was a queen of Crusader Jerusalem in the 1200s. There was a Queen Maria of Sicily and another of Epirus in the 1300s. Holy Roman Empress Maria Theresa was one of the most powerful rulers in history. Portugal had two Queens Maria, Maria I in the late 1700s, who was also Queen of Brazil, and her great-granddaughter Maria II. Napoleon's widow, Marie Louise, was Sovereign Duchess of Parma, and Marie Adelaide was Grand Duchess of Luxembourg. Britain has had three Marys. 
Mary I, who ruled England in the 1550s, her cousin and contemporary Mary Queen of Scots, and Mary II, who was queen of both nations. Yet another Mary ruled over Hungary and Croatia in the late 1300s. Her sister is the answer to the next question. Lady Thelonwyn wants to know, have there been queens regnant who were canonized as saints? Maria's father, Louis I, ruled over Hungary, Croatia, and Poland. When he died, the first two kingdoms went to Maria, and Poland went to his younger daughter, Jadwiga. She was famous for her charity and piety, and is credited with three miracles, seeing a vision of Christ who advised her to marry the Grand Duke of Lithuania and help him convert his pagan people, bringing a drowned boy back to life by covering him with a cloak, and leaving a footprint in already set plaster after giving a poor stonemason a golden shoe buckle to feed his hungry family. The footprint is still visible at the church in Krakow. Jadwiga died at the age of 25 from childbed fever. In 1997, Pope John Paul II, himself a Pole, canonized her as a saint. Her feast day is February 28th. Several of you inquired, who were the youngest and oldest queens regnant? The youngest was Mary, Queen of Scots, who was just six days old when her father, James V, died of battlefield dysentery. When the queen was nine months old, a coronation was held at Stirling Castle. The sword of state, scepter, and crown were held for her by courtiers. The oldest queen regnant was Elizabeth II of the UK, who reigned until her death at the age of 96 years, 140 days. Wendy Darling 1963 wants to know, which queens regnant have had the longest and shortest reigns? The unfortunate prize of shortest goes to Jane, who ruled England and Ireland for just nine days, from July 10th to 19th, 1553. When King Edward VI died unexpectedly at 16, his cousin, Lady Jane Grey, was placed on the throne as part of a plot to keep it from the king's Catholic sister, Mary. 15-year-old Jane had little power to defend herself, and she spent her short reign in the Tower of London while Mary's army of peasant supporters marched to challenge her. When they arrived, Jane was arrested and moved from the Tower's royal apartments to a jail cell. Now Queen, Mary I recognized that Jane had been a political pawn and did not want to execute her. But when a rebellion broke out in Jane's favor, Mary signed the death warrant, and the 16-year-old, nine days queen, lost her head. The prize for longest reign goes again to Elizabeth II, who reigned from February 6, 1952, when she was 25, to September 8, 2022, when she died at 96. A total of 70 years, 214 days. Only one monarch has outreigned her, Louis XIV of France, who ruled for 72 years, 110 days. Though he didn't live nearly as long, dying of gangrene at 76, he got a head start because he inherited the throne at the age of four. Elizabeth II holds a few other royal records, which no one asked about, but I'll tell you about anyway. She was the longest reigning and living British monarch. She and Prince Philip had the longest royal marriage at 73 years and 139 days. Elizabeth visited 116 countries, more than any other monarch. Her travel covered 1,032,513 miles, or 42 times around the world. And she appeared on the currency of 35 different nations, more than any other monarch. Lizzie kept plenty of those self-portraits in her own piggy bank. Solo Polo Vision would like to know, which queen regnant was the richest? During her lifetime, Queen Elizabeth II was the world's richest queen, with an estimated net worth of $530 million. Her portfolio consisted of profits from the Duchy of Lancaster, a vast estate which is owned personally by the British sovereign, plus numerous historic properties, jewels, antiques, and racehorses. Though the Crown Jewels and Buckingham Palace actually belong to the British people, the wealthiest female royal alive today is the former queen Beatrix of the Netherlands at $200 million. 
Her grandmother, Queen Wilhelmina, was a brilliant businesswoman who built a fortune in investments in the Netherlands and in the United States during the post-World War II boom. But Elizabeth and Beatrix's fortunes pale in comparison to the eye-popping estimated net worth adjusted to modern currency of a few other queens from the past. According to Money.com, Hatshepsut of Egypt was worth about $2 billion. Isabel of Castile amassed around $5 billion. Cleopatra VII of Egypt had about $96 billion. And Catherine the Great of Russia's empire building garnered an incredible $1.5 trillion. But the richest female ruler in history was Empress Wu of China, with a whopping $16 trillion. The only empress regnant in China's history came to power after the death of her husband and the ruthless overthrow of her sons. Between 690 and 705, she expanded China and saw huge profits from the tea and silk trade with the West. Wu is believed to have been the richest woman in history. If you're like me, you enjoy staying up to date on the news, especially anything royal related. From exploring the historical significance of recent events to getting the latest headlines, news has become increasingly biased and divisive, making it harder than ever to get the full picture behind the stories you care about. That's why I've been enjoying Ground News. This website and app is designed to give readers an easy, data-driven, and objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. Take a look at this recent story about Prince Harry visiting King Charles after his cancer diagnosis. On Ground News, I can read a summary of the story and see how many publications are covering it. Looking at the bias distribution chart, I can see that 31% of them lean left and 36 lean right. The factuality chart shows me that only 38% of reporting outlets are rated as highly factual, so I can focus on reading their articles. One of my favorite ground news features is the blind spot feed, which shares stories that are underrepresented by either the left or the right. It helps you escape your own echo chamber. Try Ground News today and get 30% off their Vantage plan, which gives you unlimited access to all of their features. This offer is only available through my link, so go to ground.news slash history tea time. And for less than $5 a month, you can make reading the news easier, more enjoyable, and less polarizing. And now, back to history. Ewan Strand7293 asks, which queen's regnant ruled over the largest and smallest lands? The largest empire under a female ruler was the British Empire under Queen Victoria. In 1901, the lands conquered in her name totaled 13 million square miles, about a quarter of the world. But Ewan Strand already knows about Victoria and asks about the next largest empire ruled by a queen. That would be Catherine the Great of Russia. Between 1762 and 1796, she personally sent her armies to expand the empire to 8.8 .8 million square miles, making it the third largest in history. The Mongols were number two, but no queens regnant there. The queens who ruled over the smallest kingdoms were Temiva IV and V, who ruled Ramatra, an island with an area of just 5.3 square miles. In 1901, Tamiva V ceded Ramatra to French Polynesia, ending the tiny nation's monarchy. British Lad Productions 5920 inquires, were there ever queens of two kingdoms at once? Yes, many times. Of course, there have been empresses who ruled over vast collections of conquered lands, but there have also been queens who wore more than one crown at a time. Margrethe I was the daughter of the King of Denmark. She married the Crown Prince of Norway, and their son Olaf inherited both. But he died at 16 and she took power. Then she conquered Sweden and became queen of all three nations, known as the Kalmar Union. Queen Mary I and Anne ruled over England, Ireland, and Scotland. Under Anne, England and Scotland merged to create the United Kingdom. 
Queen Juana inherited Castile from her mother and Aragon from her father, thus uniting the two kingdoms into Spain. Ana Catalina Lopez Letz, 3143, asks, Are there cases of consecutive queens regnant, like mother and daughter? Yes, several. In addition to Isabella and Juana of Castile, there was Catherine I and her daughter Catherine II, who were Latin empresses of Constantinople in the 1300s. And mother, daughter, and granddaughter Wilhelmina, Juliana, and Beatrix of the Netherlands, who reigned for a combined 123 years from 1890 to 2013. There have also been consecutive sister queens, including Azar Mudokat and Porindukat of Iran, and Mary I and Elizabeth I of England, as well as sets of sisters who were co queens. Trung Trak and Trung Nai ruled Vietnam between 14 and 43. Zoe and Theodora were co-Byzantine empresses in the 10 hundreds, and Sancha and Dulce ruled Lyon in Spain in 1230. A few of you asked, can a queen consort become a queen regnant? In some kingdoms in the past, yes. Empress Wu of China, Margrethe the I of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, Rana Velona the I of Madagascar, and both Catherine I and Catherine II of Russia were queen's consort who took the throne after the deaths of their spouses. Catherine II actually overthrew her husband, Peter III, and later had him quietly murdered. But over time, most monarchies got wise to this loophole and wrote laws which specifically ban spouses from claiming the throne. So there's zero chance of a Queen Camilla I of the UK. Rude Regilla Dabu Hashanis 3316 inquires, which queen regnant was married the most times? Monogamously, the record is only three. No queen's regnant reached the matrimonial quantities of Henry VIII or Ivan the Terrible. Rana Valona I of Madagascar's first husband, King Radama I, died of alcoholism at the age of 35, and she claimed his throne. To cement her rule, she married the prime minister, Reniharo. When he died, she wed another politician, Rainy Johari. Mary, Queen of Scots, also had three husbands. At 16, she was married to King Francois II of France, but he died of an ear infection and Mary returned to Scotland. There she fell in love with her handsome cousin, Henry Stuart Lord Darnley. He turned violent and demanded that she name him King. When she refused, he stabbed her secretary to death in front of her. Henry's bedroom exploded and Mary, possibly under duress, wed the number one suspect, the Earl of Bothwell. The queen fled her furious people, but her cousin, Elizabeth I, had her imprisoned for 19 years. Locked up, Mary contemplated a fourth marriage to the Duke of Norfolk. Together, they plotted to assassinate Elizabeth and rule England together, but the plan was discovered and both Thomas and Mary were beheaded before they said, I do. There have been numerous male monarchs who practiced polygamy. Many Muslim sultans and emperors of China and Japan were famous for their large harems of hundreds of concubines. But most of these monarchies also barred women from inheriting the throne. The only queen regnant I've found who practiced polyandry was Unzinga of Ndongo and Matomba. In her youth, she married a warrior and they had children. After she climbed to the throne, she wed a neighboring leader as part of a treaty. The queen also had a harem of good-looking chabados, who were a third gender in her society. Their names were not recorded, but there were at least 50. Finally, at 75, the queen, under pressure from Portuguese missionaries, had a monogamous Christian marriage to a handsome young warrior. Ana Catalina Lopez Letz, 3143, asks, have there been any queens regnant who died in childbirth? There have been many, many queens consort who died in childbirth, but far fewer queens regnant, possibly because in the past, a consort's primary value was in bearing heirs, and they were easy to replace, while the death of a queen regnant could spell disaster for the nation. The only queen regnant I found who died in childbirth was Maria II of Portugal. All 11 of her deliveries were prolonged, complicated, and excruciating. 
four babies died and were baptized in utero. So many pregnancies caused her to become obese and suffer heart problems. Maria's doctors warned against more children, but the queen brushed them off, saying, if I die, I die at my post. She was deeply in love with her husband, Ferdinand of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha, and was willing to risk death to continue going to bed with him. His first cousin, Prince Albert, had a similar effect on his own wife, Queen Victoria. There must have been something about those Coburg men. Had Victoria not heeded her own doctor's warnings and stopped at nine babies, she too might have suffered Maria's fate. During her 11th childbirth, Maria's baby was unable to emerge. Doctors operated without anesthesia, but both the child and the queen died. Maria was 34. Ferdinand wept at her bedside and embraced her lifeless body. Additionally, Queen Jadwiga of Poland died of childbed fever three weeks after giving birth. Her baby Elizabeth died as well, and they were buried together. Wendy Darling 1963 wants to know, which queen's regnant had the most children? Anne, Queen of Great Britain, had 18 children. Her first was a stillborn daughter. Next, she gave birth to Mary and Anne Sophia, but when they were two and one, they died of smallpox. 14 miscarriages and stillbirths followed. Her seventh child, Prince William, survived to be named Duke of Gloucester. He was Anne's pride and joy and the only hope for the Stuart dynasty, but he died at 11 from numerous inbreeding-related illnesses. Anne inherited the throne two years after her final tragic pregnancy. As she had no heir, the throne was later passed to her closest Protestant relative, George Prince of Hanover. The female monarch with the most surviving children was Holy Roman Empress Maria Theresa, with 16. Many of her offspring were delivered while she was on the throne. The Empress attended council meetings until contractions began and signed papers while recovering. She asserted that, had she not been almost constantly pregnant, she would have gone into battle herself. Only three of her children died in infancy. The other 13 were used as political pawns in dynastic marriages. Most famously, her youngest daughter, Marie Antoinette, became Queen of France. Jellybean Troll 9044 asks, if a queen regnant died before the prince consort, would he be titled Dowager Prince Consort? Because of the perception that a king outranks a queen, most queens regnant in the last few hundred years have offered their husbands the title prince consort rather than king. This makes it clear who the monarch really is. If a prince consort outlived his queen regnant wife, then logically he would be a prince dowager, the consort is redundant, or possibly a prince father if he were also the father of the reigning monarch. The only time in Europe in the last 200 years that this has happened was in 2004, when Prince Bernhard survived Queen Juliana of the Netherlands by just nine months. Juliana had abdicated 24 years earlier for their daughter, Queen Beatrix, so Bernhard was also the father of the reigning monarch. But officially, he was just titled His Royal Highness, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. Mitch Dean 5197 asks, if a queen regnant married a woman, what would her title be? This, as far as I know, has never happened before. But more nations are changing their laws, allowing royals in same-sex marriages to remain in the succession. So it could happen in the future. When it does, it would be up to the monarch to decide how their spouse was titled. In the UK, the title king is reserved only for the monarch, and the title king consort does not legally exist. So a gay king would have to title his husband prince consort. My guess is the wife of a queen regnant would be titled princess consort to follow the same logic. Sonia Dom Brazio, 8318, asks, Was there ever a monarchy that never had a queen regnant? Many monarchies have barred women from the throne. This kind of succession is called agnatic. France is the most prominent example in Western Europe. Even today, there are several monarchies which do not allow queens regnant, including in the Middle East and Japan. However, many of these areas have had a queen or two in their history. 
Japan has had two queens and eight empress regnants. And there have been a handful of ancient queens from various Middle Eastern monarchies, including Musa of Parthia and Puabi of Ur. In fact, there have been female rulers on every continent, save Antarctica. I've already discussed several from Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania. In the Americas, in addition to European colonial queens like Maria I of Portugal and Elizabeth II of the UK, there were a handful of ruling women in pre-Columbian cultures. The Mayans had Lady Kaowil Eja and Sak Kaku. The Aztecs had Azcasach, Milenexalchitel, and others. Several Native American tribes had chieftainesses, including Glory of the Morning of the Hukak people and Queen Alequipa of the Seneca tribe. In South America, an Incan mummy called Lady of Cao was discovered who may have been a ruling woman in the 400s. Mitch Dean5197 asks, which point in history had the most queens regnant at the same time? According to my research, the most simultaneous queens regnant there have ever been is seven in the year 1385. Queen Beatrix ruled Portugal. Maria was queen of Hungary and Croatia, and her sister Jadwiga ruled Poland. Maria Angela ruled Epirus, one of the successor states of the Byzantine Empire. Eleanor ruled Arbora in Sardinia. Maria was queen of Sicily, and Dine was Sultana of the Maldives. Nancy Johnson 7147 inquires, when was the last time the world had no queens regnant? The 19th and 20th centuries had many significant and long-reigning queens. The Netherlands had three consecutive generations, Wilhelmina, Juliana, and Beatrix, going back to 1890. Wilhelmina's reign overlapped with Queen Victoria's, who takes us all the way back to 1837. Queen Isabella II of Spain began her reign a few years earlier in 1833. The five-year gap between June 1828, when Maria II of Portugal was deposed by her uncle, and September 1833, when Isabella II of Spain inherited the throne at the age of three, was the last time Europe had no queens regnant. However, there was still one female monarch in Europe of a lower rank, Maria Louise, Duchess of Parma. There were also several female monarchs outside of Europe. To find the last period in history when the world had no female monarchs of any kind, we have to go back exactly 300 years to 1724. In February 1720, Queen Ulrika Eleonora of Sweden handed her throne to her husband, Frederick I. The four years between then and 1724, when we Batari Toja regained her throne as Sultana of Bonai, a small state in Indonesia, was the last total female power vacuum in history. While we may not have a single queen regnant at the moment, we are not actually in a female power vacuum. There are currently 29 politically elected or appointed female heads of state or government around the world. Many of you asked who the world's next queen regnant will be, and there is so much to explore on this topic that I will be dedicating next week's episode to introducing you to the potential future queens and counting down how soon they're likely to get their thrones. Another popular question was which nation has had the most queens regnant throughout history? This will be my topic on March 19th, so join me then when I'll be counting down the nations which have had nine or more female monarchs and giving the highlights of each of their reigns. If you don't want to wait to see these next two episodes, then consider joining my Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, patrons can support my work and get exclusive early access to all my multi-part series. If you stay to the end, then I know you're a true History Tea Time fan. And if you'd like to ask me more questions about the queens of the world, or talk about your favorite topics in history over a real cup of tea, then join me in Scotland, May 15th to 21st. There are only a few spots left, as 16 awesome history lovers have already signed up to explore castles with me. 
time is running out. March 25th will be the final day to secure your spot. So click the link in the description to book this once in a lifetime trip today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. Thank you for watching.